In Colorado Springs, we actually had our own legendary jazz venue. It was the Cotton Club on Colorado Avenue, and it was inspired in large part by the Rossonian. The club's owner, Fannie Mae Duncan, was also a pioneer in the civil rights movement. Let's find out more. From 1948 until 1975, Fannie Mae Duncan ran the Cotton Club on Colorado Avenue in Colorado Springs. The Cotton Club is a legend in Colorado Springs. Everyone has a story associated with the Cotton Club. There, world-class African-American jazz entertainers performed to an integrated audience for the first time in Colorado Springs history. The club's motto, Everybody Welcome, challenged the era's de facto segregation. Fannie Mae was the catalyst for the peaceful integration of Colorado Springs during the very volatile civil rights movement. During that time in other cities, there was violence and there was bloodshed and there were flaming Molotov cocktails being thrown in streets. But here in Colorado Springs, Fannie Mae was serving chilled cocktails to people of every ethnicity who would come in because of their mutual love with the arts and sit side by side to enjoy the evening. When you walked into the front door from Colorado Avenue, on the right side of the club, there was these big, beautiful leather red booths. And uh, I mean, you could sit maybe seven, six or seven people in a booth because they were huge. The booths were always full in there. The jazz band was going. But not just anybody. She booked what became a music hall of fame. Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Horace Henderson, um, Fats Domino, there's a, no, a number of them. Oh, so, it's so many I can't even think of. All of the greats played in Colorado Springs. She wanted to rival clubs in Denver, Kansas City, and New York City. It meant that people in Colorado Springs were seeing cutting edge music that otherwise would have been unavailable. She used to have big entertainers from all over the country that came there, like Cab Calloway and Flip Wilson got his start there. Here's Flip. These were black entertainers and they were not welcome in the major facilities. So if you wanted to see these amazing talents, the Cotton Club was the only place in town to do that. I don't care who you were, you were welcome at the Cotton Club. Oh, it was fun, it was fun. And the bands were really, really good. The house band was Jimmy Jules. He was a great musician and he would have you laughing, but he'd have you rocking more than anything. And I was hired to perform at the Cotton Club three days a week, three sets a night, three songs per set. Fannie Mae paid me $75 per week. The stage was very small, and we had four band members. I remember Jimmy Jules would be on the B3 organ, Horace Butler would be on lead guitar, Mickey White would be on the bass guitar, and Jimmy Jones was our drummer. And I would have to fit in front of them uh, onto that small stage and plus move around. So we had some good times at the Cotton Club. I consider Fannie Mae Duncan a, a modern day entrepreneur. She knew what it took to get people in the door, keep people in the door, and prevent them from going out the door. She had something for everyone. So on my cards, I always said on them, easy to find and hard to leave. <laughs> a bronze statue of Fannie Mae is to be placed outside the Pikes Peak Center for the Performing Arts in downtown Colorado Springs, just a stone's throw from where the Cotton Club once stood. If you want to learn more about Fannie Mae Duncan and the Cotton Club of Colorado Springs, you are in luck. We've created an hour-long documentary about this amazing story for our history series, Colorado Experience. Find it at rmpbs.org slash coex.